हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अर्पिता करवा डॉट कॉम इंडियाज़ फाइनेस्ट ऑनलाइन कोचिंग फॉर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड टुडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्क बाय जॉनथन स्विफ्ट व्हिच इज़ कॉल्ड गलिवर्स ट्रैवल्स इट्स अ प्रो सटायर सो आई डोंट नो इफ यू रिमेंबर बट ऑल ऑफ अस हैड इट समवेयर इन आर मिडिल स्कूल फिफ्थ सिक्स स्टैंडर्ड अ चैप्टर ऑन गलिवर्स ट्रैवल्स एंड इट वॉज रियली इंटरेस्टिंग एंड आई एम श्योर it will be interesting today also so let's begin the introduction to gulliver's travels so friends gulliver's travels or travels into several remote nations of the world is the story of adventures of lemuel gulliver the narrator and the main character of the story this work has been written in four parts the four parts will take us to four distant places gulliver travels to now before talking about the various journeys of gulliver let us understand his background and his early life Gulliver was a married surgeon from Nottinghamshire, England, who loved travelling. So in the start he used to work as a surgeon on the ships, but eventually he became a captain, rightly called as captain of several ships. So from surgeon to captain, this was his journey. So throughout these books Gulliver will travel to lots of lands and meet all kinds of strange people and places. Now before we jump into the story, dear friends, there is an important point here that needs to be noted. Gulliver's travels earned Swift the bad name of being a misanthrope. What is a misanthrope? In simple words, a person who hates or avoids other people. Despite all, while concluding the work, Gulliver argues that his motivation for telling the tale is to inform and instruct mankind. Now friends in this work Gulliver the main character refers to the famous English explorer William Dampier the famous writer of two voyages as his cousin So let's begin the story enough of facts so novel opens and we find that Gulliver's ship got damaged in a storm and when he wakes up after the accident he finds himself on an island called Lilliput where he was unconscious and he basically had reached the island due to impact of the waves now the people of that place they are extremely small in fact just like less than 6 inches tall so they are called Lilliputians and they tie tiny threads on Gulliver they shout at him and poke him with their tiny arrows Finally they build a wagon or cart to carry Gulliver to their capital city and present him to their king. Now though the king keeps Gulliver as a captive but impressed by Gulliver's good behavior Gulliver is given good treatment including food and clothes. Eventually Gulliver becomes a friend of the king and is set free to roam around the island. It is then the king asks Gulliver for a favor in war against Blefuscu a neighboring kingdom of another set of tiny people. So Gulliver agrees captures and brings all the warships of Blefuscu to Lilliput. Now seeing this, the king becomes greedy. He sees the potential of Gulliver as a weapon against other kingdoms. So he says, uh, I want you to bring all the, uh, you know, citizens of Blefuscu as slaves. But Gulliver then denies and says that he has become friends with people of Blefuscu too. So seeing the friendship between Gulliver and the people of Blefuscu irritates the king of Lilliput. So the last nail in the coffin came when a fire broke out in the royal palace. To protect the people, Gulliver urinates on the palace and puts off the fire. However, this act of Gulliver gets him into a big trouble. Gulliver is accused of treason and sentenced to be shot in the eyes and then starved to death. Fearing his life, Gulliver escapes to Blefuscu and finds a boat there that helps him leave for England. So that was his exciting journey uh, to the land of Lilliput. Now let's move ahead. Uh Gulliver stays in England with his wife and family for 2 months and then again leaves for another adventure to a land called Brobdingnag where the people were giants being 60 feet tall. So in Lilliput people were very tiny and in Brobdingnag the people were extremely huge. He was the tiny one now. So Gulliver is captured by a farmer who puts him in a cage and displays him as an entertainment object around Brobdingnag. The farmer further sells Gulliver to the queen in exchange for 1000 pieces of gold. Even in the queen's possession, Gulliver had to entertain with his musical talents. So there was a caretaker girl, her name was Glumdalclitch. Now, she was appointed by the queen for Gulliver. 
and she gave a name to Gulliver and called him Grildrig. So, friends, uh, another thing to remember that in Brobdingnag, Gulliver is called Grildrig. So, Gulliver now meets the king of Brobdingnag, and they have serious discussions about history, institutions, political signs, and everything. So, there's at one point the king disrespects England and dismisses Gulliver, but Gulliver does not escape. But on a trip. His cage is plucked up by an eagle and thrown in the sea, where he finds his ship and sails back to England. So this was his second journey to the place called Brobdingnag. So you just look at the storyboard and remember the important people and names and the basic flow of the story. That would be enough. Now moving on, after another two months, Gulliver travels again and is captured by a group of pirates on a small island called Alni Barbi. As he's sitting on the island, he sees a floating island overhead, whose name is Laputa. He asks for help and is brought up by rope. The inhabitants of Laputa were people who had deep interest in mathematics, astronomy, and music. So, in a sense, these people were more into theory rather than practicality. Then Gulliver further visits Lagado, where he saw many academies which were performing useless scientific projects. Glub Dub Drib, an island of sorcerers or people with magical powers, mostly helped by the evil. Here he meets the ghosts of famous historical figures. Then he further goes to Lugnag, an island that had a king who ruled over a population of senile immortals, that is a population which acted in a confused way due to old age, but would live forever due to immortality. From here, he makes his way to Japan, and from there, he goes back to England. Now, on his final adventure, the fourth one, Gulliver travels to an island called Hoenum. Friends, this is the last book of Gulliver Travels, and the inhabitants of this land are horses who can think and talk, called the Hoenums. The Hoenums have a simple and peaceful society where they value reason and truth. They are masters of the Yahoos, who are human-like creatures. Now, friends, uh, they have so few words in their language because their wants and passions are fewer than human. and they need very less words to conversate because you know basically they are trying to say that humans are greedy and humans have more wishes and wants and passions so, and the creatures here they don't so they use lesser words the yahoos are the servants to the hoenums and pull the carriages and perform manual tasks Gulliver learns the language of Hoenns and talks with them on several topics. Despite being very impressed with the rationality and lifestyle of the Hoenns, Gulliver is asked to leave the island obediently, as he can never be part of them, because he looks the same as the Yahoos, only with the ability to clip his nails, shave, and wear clothes. So hence, Gulliver travels to a nearby island where he is picked up by a Portuguese ship and returned to England. So once he returns to his country, he only sees other people as yahoos, and he can't tolerate being with them. He even refused his wife and children to touch his bread and drink out of his cup. Hence, he desires to get back with Hoenns. In his desire, he starts talking to his two horses in the stable, and hence, with this adventure, we come to the end of Gulliver's Travels. I'll tell you some facts and quotes now. This work is a social and political satire on Augustan society. This work has given so many new words to English language, like Yahoo, Lilliputian, etc. Now, friends, some important quotes. I cannot but conclude that the bulk of your natives to be the most pernicious race of little odious vermin that nature ever suffered to crawl upon the surface of the earth. Undoubtedly. Philosophers are in the right when they tell us that nothing is great or little otherwise than by comparison. So here comes the end of the chapter. So now you get to know about different four 
uh, islands where Gulliver travels. And when we were young and we had this chapter in our literature book, it was just about the Lilliput Island because it was fascinating and interesting for children to get to know about a giant and tiny people. But here we get to learn so much more and four different places. Look at the storyboards and you will get an idea about what happens where. So that's it from my side for this lecture. We'll meet soon in the next lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning. Keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.